Great things he hath done, so love he the world that he gave us his son, who yielded his life and atonement for sin, and opened the life gate that all may go in. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son and give him the glory great things he hath done O oh, perfect redemption the purchase of blood to every believer the promise of God the vilest offender who truly believes that moment from Jesus a pardon receives. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son and give him the glory, great things he hath done. Great things he hath taught us, great things he hath done. And great hoary rejoicing through Jesus the Son, but purer and higher and greater will be our wonder, our transport when Jesus we see. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. Come to the Father through Jesus the Son and give him the glory great things he hath done amen 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 to god be the glory great things he hath done I just want to extend a warm welcome to everyone that's here this evening to those that are online we are so delighted that you're able to join us uh, on our online platform so you can be able to share in uh, this awesome experience of our Revelation semin uh, seminar with us uh, this evening. We are going to go into our theme song and then we are, we're going to pray, I'm sorry, then go into our theme song. I'm so sorry about that. Um, shall we stand for a word of prayer? Heavenly Father, again, we are so delighted to come into your house this evening just to worship you, just to give you praise and adoration. We thank you, God, for the week that we have toil and labor. And Father, we come now expecting a blessing through your manservant. I pray, God, that you will anoint his lips as he speak. So, Father, the words that come forth will be able to transform our very being. I pray, God, for every member, every person that is standing here at this moment, for those that are online, we ask, God, that you'll grant us a double portion of your blessing. Prepare us, God, for the end time. 
Help us, Lord, to make you first and foremost in our life. Above all, Father, we ask that you'll save us into your kingdom. Those that are coming, hasten their footsteps and grant us all a magnificent blessing. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. I'm so sorry. Keep standing. Let every lamp be burning bright. We're going to do the first and the last verse. Let every lamp be burning bright. The darkest hour is nearing. The darkest hour of earth's long night before the Lord's appearing. Then trim your lamps, my brethren dear. Then trim your lamps with godly fear. The master's coming, joyeth near. Let every lamp be burning. Then let good works with faith appear to help the world around us. Obedience brings a blessing near when faith has firmly bound us. Then trim your lamps, my brethren dear. Then trim your lamps with godly fear. The master's coming, joyeth near. Let every lamp be burning. Amen. We'll turn the program over to Elder Griffiths. Amen. 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 Happy Sabbath to everyone. It's always good to see so many of you out here. And I'm happy God has brought you here. And he's going to, there's a blessing awaits you. Amen? Amen. Have you been enjoying the studying? Yes. Have you been learning new things? Yes. From the word of God? Yes. Amen. And you notice what happened. All the things I take is from the word of God. No writer than the Holy Spirit through inspiration. And that's the word of God. Amen. Amen. Well, tomorrow is going to be our last. I know. I know. But we have had a good journey. Great journey. Through the book of Revelation. And that was promised to you. And thank God through Jesus Christ we came through with it for you. Amen. Tomorrow morning, we're going to be uh, doing our last presentation. And that is going to be the seven plagues in the book of Revelation. We're going to find out if AIDS or COVID is one of them. Because you remember, we, they used to say that COVID is one of the plagues. We're going to find out if that is true. Then, in the evening, we're going to be having our graduation. Those of you who have been doing your lessons online, I would very much like you to come down and receive your certificate. And I'm going to let you know that we also have a few Bibles we're going to be giving out as well for those special people. Depending on how you, came, how you come, we're going to be giving out a few Bibles. Amen? Amen. So you don't want to miss it. So when you come tomorrow morning, lunch will be served. Amen? Amen. After service, lunch will be And we're also having a baptism. Amen? Amen. Amen. Then lunch. Then we come back down here. We do receive our certificate. And we have some questions. People have been sending questions. And so we're going to be answering these questions tomorrow in the afternoon. Amen? Amen? Radiation. And some people want to testify how much they have learned and what the Revelation Seminar has done to them and for them. Amen? Amen. So we're going to have a great time and we're going to ask you to what you need to do. If you're going to graduate, whenever somebody's going to graduate, well, they always invite others. Hey, tomorrow is my graduation. I'm sending an invitation to you because I'm going to be walking up to collect my certificate. Amen? Amen? So I hope that you've been inviting your friends. Okay, tonight we're going to be doing Mystic Babylon, the Great Harlot. Amen? Amen. Mystic Babylon, the Great Harlot. 
dear God and our Father, we come tonight with our vessels empty. And we know when we leave from your presence, it will be full. That we are sure that we will not be disappointed. Those who are watching online, we pray for them as well. That they too may come to know and understand more about you. That will lead them closer to you. And in the end, those who have not yet given their hearts to you, Lord, will yield and say, yes, I yield. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Mystic Babylon the Great. What the Lord does, he, he clothed the book of Revelation in symbol. And so we're going to find out now the symbol of spiritual apostasy. So God's final three-point message of love and mercy, because God is all about love. Even in destroying the wicked, he destroyed the wicked out of love. Let me explain. If the drunkard in his state goes to heaven and there's no liquor up there, he's going to be uncomfortable. You understand? If the thief goes to heaven Unrepented, he's going to try to dig up the gold on the street because we're going to be walking on Golden Street. So God's destroy the wicked out of love, not bringing him into heaven where he will be uncomfortable. Follow it. If the party go, loves to party, and when he goes to heaven, there is no party, no soaker. No bacchanal. What's going to happen? He's not going to be happy. So because he loves that. And he died loving it. God does not take him to heaven. Because he's going to be uncomfortable. And remember. He's not going to change from bad to good. We only change from corruptible to incorruptible. And from mortal to immortality. The same way you go down is the same way you're going to come up. So, this is it. God's final three-point message of love and mercy is being taken to the entire world in our day. In Revelation chapter 14, verse 6 to 12, says, what is the second part of that message? And there follow another angel saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen. That great city, because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. And this fornication here doesn't mean sexual activity. But this for, for, fornication here means then that they have traded, traded their God for another God. Their Savior for another Savior. Their, God's message for another message. And it's false message. What is God's command regarding Babylon? And to whom is it given? Bible says, and I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, who? My people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. Some say that Babylon refers to the literal biblical city of Babylon Restored. What does the Bible say regarding this? The Bible tells us, and Babylon, the glory of kingdoms, the beauty of the Chaldees, excellency shall be as when God overthrows Sodom and Gomorrah. So Babylon at some point is going to be like Sodom and Gomorrah. It shall never be inhabited. Neither shall it be dwelt in from generation to generation. Neither shall the Arabian pitch tent there. Neither shall the shepherds make their fold there. Saddam Hussein wanted to rebuild Babylon. But the Bible says it will never be inhabited. And after a while, Americans landing Apache helicopter there. 
will never be inhabited. But wild beasts of the desert shall lie there, and their houses shall be full of doleful creatures, and all shall dwell there, and satyrs shall dance there. What reason does God give for telling his people to come out of Babylon? And he cried mightily with a strong voice saying, Babylon, the great is fallen, is fallen, and is become the habitation of devils and the hold of every false spirit and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. For all nations have drunk of the wine Drunk of the wine, have, have received false doctrine. This drinking of wine symbolizes false doctrine. For the all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. And the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her. The merchants of the earth are wax rich through the abundance of her delicacies. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. For her sins have reached unto heaven, and God had remembered her iniquities. As soon as sin becomes a stench in God's face, he's going to do something. During the building of the Torah of Babel, they built and built until God said, listen, we have to go down and see what these people are doing. And right there, he confounded their language. So as soon as sin comes up in God's face, become a stench, he's going to do something. He will do something. Under what symbolism does God picture Babylon? Bible says, aho. Riding on a beast. Now, this is what happened. In Revelation chapter 12, we find the dragon. As soon as the woman was about to give birth, the dragon was ready to destroy the woman and her child. Revelation chapter 12. But as we reach Revelation chapter 17, this same dragon is being ridden by a woman. So the big, big, bad red dragon who wants to destroy the woman and her child is now controlled by a woman. And notice what happened now. A woman in prophecy symbolizes a church. Are you with me? So now the dragon wants to destroy God's church. But then another church have it under control. And you notice what happened. While the beast is carrying the rider, it's not the beast that is in control. It's the rider that is in control. So then break it down a little bit. So then it's the it's this beast, the woman who is in control of the beast. So the church is riding the beast. This bad, big bad red dragon. And there came out of the seven angels which had the seven vials, and talk with me and saying unto me, Come hither, I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore, what that sitted upon many waters. And you notice what happened. Waters in prophecy represents what? People. So this, this woman or this church is in control, sitted upon many waters, is in control of many nations. You are, are you there? With whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet colored beast, full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet colored and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand full of abomination 
and filthiness of her fornication. So we're going to break this down a little bit. The woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color, and she decked with gold and precious stones, having in her hand a golden cup full of abomination. So, and upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery Babylon of the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. Now, we're going to show you that this woman, this woman is trying to personate God's high priest, or personate Christ himself. Let me show you. In the book of Exodus, the colors in the high priest's garment were this. Exodus chapter 39 and verse 1 said, And the blue and purple and scarlet, they made clothes of service to do service in the holy place. And made the holy garments of Aaron, the Lord com commanded Moses. So Aaron is the high priest. The work of the high priest is to present the people before God and to pre present God before the people. So when the high priest goes on, the high priest take on the sins of the people that have been piled up in the most holy place for, 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 for a year. All right? So now, look what colors the woman have. She have red and she have scarlet. And she have red, red and purple. I'm sorry. Scarlet and purple. But, and they made plates of the holy crown of pure gold and wrote upon it writing like the engraves of a signet holy. Holiness to the Lord. So this woman garments have two colors. The high priest garments have three. So then Pilate therefore, and we're going to see what the colors are. Then Pilate therefore took Jesus and scourged him. And the soldiers plaited a crown of thorns and put it on his head. And they put on him a Purple road. So purple here symbolizes what? Royalty. This church has royalty. Let's go on. So we move on to the next one. Then Jesus came forth wearing the crowns of thorn and the purple robe. And the pilot said unto him, Behold the man. Let's look what the scarlet is. Isaiah chapter 18 and verse one, one, chapter 1 and verse 18 said, Come now and let us reason together, said the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. So this church is full of royalty. And remember now, red or scarlet represents sin. So it is claimed that it can forgive sin. Are you with me? So let's move on. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many. For the remission of only Jesus can forgive sin. But this church claimed that it can forgive sin. We move on. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel and bid them that they make them fringes in the border of their garments. Throughout their generation that they put upon the fringes of the borders a ribbon of, a ribbon of blue. And it shall be unto you for a fringe. That you may look upon it and remember all the commandments of the Lord and do them. That they may, that ye seek not after your own heart and your own eyes, after which ye used to go a whoring. So of the three colors that are in the colors of the priest's garment, this woman only have two. She has scarlet 
man she have the purple? Let's look. That's what the Bible has to say. What is Babylon the Great call in Revelation chapter 17 and verse 5? The mother of harlots. So this woman has possessed two of the colors, but one of the color, the blue, she does not have. And the blue represents what? God's commandment. So now, look what happened. In Revelation chapter 12, the woman in Revelation chapter 12 have a son. But the woman in Revelation chapter 17 have what? Daughters. And the reason why the Bible used daughters is that the female section, they reproduce. But the son does not reproduce. For the son to have any children, he must adopt. So that is why we don't burn a Christian. You understand? We don't burn a Christian. We become Christian by accepting the blood of Jesus Christ. But the woman that produces daughters, it means then that all she produces is church after church after church. Those are the daughters. How do I know? What happened is that the Catholic Church established itself and there was a king by the name of King Henry the seventh. So King Henry the seventh speak with King and Queen Isabella and Ferdinand of Spain to send their daughter Catherine over to England to marry their son Arthur. But before the marriage could happen, Arthur died. So Henry the seventh has a son by the name of Henry VIII. So Arthur, Henry VII said, take the woman and marry her. So eventually, Henry VIII married to Catherine. And they produced one child. Mary, the same Mary that we, we look in the history and call Bloody Mary. They pr produces one child, but they want to produce a son. And time after time after time, she get pregnant, but she have miscarriage. So Henry VIII decided, just listen, I want to forget about this marriage and because I see somebody else. He, see, he saw a woman by the name of Anne Boleyn. Wanted to marry Anne Boleyn, but he has to divorce Catherine. So the Pope at that time was Leo X. And Leo X, Declare and said, no, you can't do that. Because if you do that, we're going to excommunicate you. And somehow, King Henry VIII get his archbishop to write up some documents and to declare that, yes, he can do it. He went and he, and he divorced Catherine. And so the Catholic Church excommunicated him. So what Henry VIII did? Went now and he took up and he made a church for himself. And he called it the Anglican Church. Go to your history. If you think I'm not speaking the truth, right where you're sitting, you can look it up. And you Google. So because of that, he, 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 he established his own church and called it the Anglican Church. Or the same church that you call Church of England. Nothing changes. All the services are the same, only the name. So therefore, this is what the Bible says now, that this is a mother of harlots. In other words, and all those reformers who have stood up against the Catholic, they raise up churches under their name. You understand? Lutherans and all those, Wesleyans, and they raise churches up under their names. So, sometimes you have a church at that corner and the minister and the deacon can't get along. So what he does? He takes a little set of the people 
And he go on there and he rent a place and have a church. And if while he's there, he has a problem with another deacon, that same deacon take a set of the people and go and have another church. So the Bible is telling you that this system is the mother of all that. But the woman in Revelation chapter 12 only have a son. No wonder the Bible says, in the book of Galatians chapter 4 and verse 4, when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, to redeem them that which are under the law. To redeem us. Amen. God wants to redeem us. That's, his, that's why he came. A universal religious system. Let us review other evidence that Babylon refers to the papacy. Look at it. What is the source of the name Babylon? In the book of Genesis chapter 10 verse 9. And Cush begot Nimrod. He began to be a mighty one in, er in the earth. He was mighty. He was a mighty hunter before the Lord. Therefore it said, even as Nimrod, the mighty hunter before the Lord. And the beginning of his kingdom was Babel. And Erech, and Achad, and Kali, in the land of China, is the same China that is found right now in Iraq. That place is right now in Iraq, China. So, and the Lord gave Je Jehoiakim, king of Judah, into his hand, and the part of the vessel of the house of God, which he carried into the land of China. The same China is where God's people was being delivered and took into captivity to the house of his God. And he brought the vessels into the treasure house of his God. In other words, because of disobedience, they were led in captivity from Jerusalem or from Judah back to Babylon. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men build. That's the tower of Babel. And the Lord said, Behold, the people is one, that they have all one language. And this they began to do. And now nothing will restrain them from them which they have imagined to do. Go to, let us go down. Go to, and there confound their language that they be not understand one another's speech. As soon as sin become a stench in God's face, He's going to make a move. Amen? He's going to do something. And it's pretty soon too. So the Lord scattered them abroad from thence upon the face of all the earth. And they left off to build the city. They stopped building. Therefore, the name of it is called Babel because the Lord did there confound the language and of all the earth. And from thence did the Lord scatter them abroad upon the face of all the earth. So the Babylon means confusion. Confusion. False doctrine intoxicates. What is that cause the confusion of spiritual Babylon? This woman only have the purple and the scarlet. She does not have the blue because the blue symbolizes God's commandment. I'm going to prove it to you before you leave here tonight. With whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk, have made drunk with the wine of her fornication. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet colored, decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand, full of, fornic full of abomination and filthiness of her fornication. So this system will be a rich system Royal system. And this system will claim that it can forgive sin. Are you with me? Okay. So, look what happened. In Christmas, this system used scarlet or red. And in Easter, It is not hidden from you. It has been revealed to you. They use purple. And if you think I'm telling a lie, look what's going on up in Jerusalem now. 
This is the color that they dress in. Now, but in Christmas time, they use red. And many of us, we come to church and we dress up in red. We don't know why you dress up in red in Christmas. But you dress up in red because everybody's doing it. That's where it came from. But they don't use the blue. Because the blue symbolizes the commandment. Am I speaking truth? So, for all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. And the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her. And the merchants of the earth are wax rich through the abundance of her delicacies. All those days that they have instituted is only to make you take your money. Only to take your money. And you take your credit card and you buy this and buy this, only hang it up in the closet. If the church asks you to be a support, you only give a dollar in the plate. But you'll spend all kind of money at Macy's. Rip. <laughs> support God's cause. Support God's cause. In Revelation 14 on verse 8, what specific Reason does God give for punishing Babylon and calling people out? Because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. God, in his wisdom, uses those colors because he knows that in the end time, this is what's going to happen. To open your eyes and to see Truth from error. And to read his words. Thy word have I hid in my heart. That I may not sin against thee. The wine of her fornication. And let me explain some of the wine. That the ten commandments are not binding. Then. Ten commandments are not binding. But that same person who tells you the ten commandments is not binding. If somebody break into their house, they say they're a thief. All right? And what they do? They call the police. The problem is, it's not the rest of the commandments that they have. The, it's not the rest of the commandments they have a problem with. There are nine that they don't have a problem with. It's only one that they have a problem with, and that's the fourth. Remember the seventh day to keep it holy. That's the only commandment that they have a problem with. That Sunday or the first day is a holy day. No way in the Bible that the Bible uh, sanctions such things. That you have a second chance, but my Bible tells me, today if you hear his voice, harden not your heart. Because your second chance is now. Your second chance is now. Tomorrow, there's going to be a baptism here. And it's time that, because Jesus is making up his jewels. And he doesn't want your name to be left out. But there's something you have to do. Not only believe, but you have to be baptized. Mark 16 and verse 16 says, He that believeth. And is baptized shall be saved. But he that believeth believe not and is not baptized shall be done. Second chance is now, friends. Secret rapture. There's nothing secret about the coming of Jesus. Because the Bible says, as the lightning shineth from the east to the west, even so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. Nothing secret about him. Eternal torment. That you're going to be tormented eternally. And we have some questions on that. We're going to be answering that tomorrow. There's nothing so... What kind of God would that be? To torment eternally. It means then that when you're burned, this burn that burned forever 
is that when that burn is dead, you, ex you exist no more forever. Your existence is out. You don't exist no more. Immortality of the soul, that when a person dies, there's something that comes out of that individual. But we don't have a soul, friends. We are souls. You understand? And the Bible said that the soul that sinneth, it shall die. So we don't have soul. We are souls. Counterfeit baptism. All kind type of baptism. Even baptism over the phone. Call over the phone and you're baptized. But that's not what the Bible says. Because when we read in the book of Acts chapter 8, the encounter with the Ethiopian eunuch and Philip, the Bible said it went down into the water. Jesus and John went down into the water and they were baptized. So if I'm going to be baptized, I must baptize like the way that Jesus was baptized. Because why? I want to follow him and follow in his footsteps. Papers, the past, present, and future. How does God describe the beast in Revelation chapter 17 and verse 8? The beast, that was, it exists. The beast that is not, the reason why it is not is because it's in a docile state right now. It does not change. Yet, and yet is. When the time comes, it will exercise all the powers that it exercised before. And it will cause both rich and poor, bond and free, who does not obey its precepts or obey its rule to be killed. It is docile now. But she, not, she don't change. So, the beast that thou sawest was and is not, and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit, and go into perdition. And they that dwell on the earth shall wonder, whose names were not written in the book of the life for the found, from the foundation of the world. When they behold the beast that was, and is not, and yet is, a mountain in prophecy represents a king or a nation. What nations or powers are represented by the seven mountains of Revelation? And there and here is the mind which had wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sitteth. And there are seven kings. Five are fallen and one is. And the other is not yet come. And when he cometh, he must continue a short space. And the beast that was and is not, even he is the eighth and is of the seventh and goeth into perdition. In other words, she's docile right now, friends. She's not making any move. And the reason why it is not making any move that be because of the people of God are not preaching as they should. But if God's people was preaching as we should, then what happened? It will irritate it. It will start the persecution. But she don't need to persecute now. Because many of the churches, God's people, are falling in line with her. So there is no protest. You understand? But as soon as because God has his people. Amen. And they're going to preach the end time message. And live the life that God wants them to live. Amen. It will irritate her. Because it must happen again. So the Bible says that five are falling. Babylon. Falling. She reigns from 605 to 539 B.C. Then media Persia came in under the, under the leadership of a man called Cyrus, General Cyrus. And the media Persia ruined from 539 to 331 when Alexander the Great defeated Darius the Third. 
All right? Defeated the rise of third in 331 BC. And Greece reigned from 331 BC until 168 BC when Rome defeated the, Persia, the, the Greeks. Philip V of Macedonia in 168 BC. Then Rome fell in 476 AD. When she fell, 476 AD, there was a 10 kingdom divided. It was called divided Rome. Alemanni, Germany, Anglo Saxon, England, Suvi, we have Spain, Vis Visigoths, Spain, and then we have Franks, France, and so. So all those 10 European kingdoms, there was different names, but now they are called the English name. Lombards became the Italians. And that happened 1,000 to 1,260 years until 1798, when that beast power was wounded, the head of the beast was wounded when, but um, he was arrested by Berthier, Napoleon's brother, because he did not support Napoleon and his kingdom, or his government. So Napoleon sent his brother Berthier to go arrest Pope Pius VI. Took him from Italy to Versailles. And he died in exile. I'm speaking history. And that history is in collaboration with the word of God. They explain the word of God. So now, papacy from deadly wound when it received it 1798, until the recover of the deadly wound. And the deadly wound was recovered or healed 1929, when Benedicto Mussolini signed everything back over to the Roman church. And the Bible says that when that wound is healed, all the world will wander after the beast. Papacy from miraculous recover until the king, ten kings support. He is the eighth. It is not, it is exists, but is not exercising its power even at this time. The eighth. Papacy during the ten horns confederacy. What do the ten horns represent? Ten horns and the ten horns which thou sawest are ten kings which have received no kingdom as yet, but received power as kings, one hour with the beast. So these are the 10 European kingdoms. After Rome was divided up, we have 10 kingdoms that came out of Rome. Go to your history. So Paul in churches refuse reform. Many ask, why their church is so cold and worldly? They wonder why is God's law not taught with power and why sin is not condemned? The power is gone, they say. And the question, they want to ask the question, what is the reason? Babylon is falling. The same power are the same zeal that these reformers started out with the zeal as it coming down to our time, that zeal is gone. Let me tell you. The, the, the Lutheran church have already apologized to the Catholic church, you did not know this, for what Luther has done. The Lutheran church Apologize all these things we should know. Apologize to the Catholic Church 
for how, what, what Luther had done to the Catholic Church. So they are coming back home to the mother. So that's why the Bible said Babylon is falling. It's falling. Some feel we should try to reform the churches that have fallen. What does God say? 18 4 says, Come out of her, my people that he received not of her plagues. You cannot reform her. But what you can do is to come out of her. You need to come out of those churches that are not standing or preaching God's commandment. You need to come out of those churches that are saying the commandments are done away with. Because that's the very commandment, the law of liberty that you will be judged by. So if it is no more, how are you going to be judged? And if where there is no law, there is no what? There is no sin. So, God calls Christian people who are in Babylon, my people. Oh, it's so lovely. Despite the fact that many are in Babylon, many are in these false denominations, false churches, God still calls them my people. He still, and Jesus says, my sheep know my voice. And I, they, and they, I'm, I, I am known of them. Jesus' reference to Christian, Christian people are not in his church as other sheep. Jesus says, other sheep I have that are not of this fold. Them I also bring, there shall be one fold and one shepherd. And I said, Amen. What does Jesus say will happen to his other sheep that are not in his fold? Bible says, another sheep I have. That is John chapter 10 and verse 16. Which are not of this fold, them also I must bring. And they shall hear my voice. And they shall be one fold and one shepherd. Friends, Jesus will always remain a shepherd. Good shepherd. But he's calling us out of the goat's pen into his own fold, sheepfold. They are sheep, but they are in the goat's pen. And you and I need to bring the gospel to them that they might come out and come into Jesus' fold. It shall be one fold. And one shepherd, God's true church today. In Noah's day, those who were in, to be saved and to enter the ark, believe, believing was not enough. In Jesus' Jesus' day, those who were to be saved had to enter Jesus' fold. So believing is not enough because even the devil believed too. Believe is only 50% because the Bible says, Mark 16 and verse 16, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. So one has not only to believe, one must be baptized. So believing was not enough in Jesus' day. Those who were to be saved had to enter Jesus' fold after being called out of Babylon. What must be? What must we enter today if we will be saved? We must enter God's church. The Bible says that, and the Lord added to the church daily, such as should be saved. So while the ark back there was a savior for the antediluvian, God has established his church today for his people. And don't tell me that your church is your heart. Because the Bible says of all the things, it is desperately wicked. Amen? A lot of people say, my church is my heart. A lot of people say, well, I believe. But what are you doing about it? It's only 50%. It is just as necessary for a person to enter God's true church today 
as it was for our people to enter the ark in Noah's day. If I remain in Babylon, how will God count me? And what does he say will happen to me? Let me tell you what God said will happen to you. I will partake of her sins and receive of her plagues. Remember now, you continue. I will partake of her sins and receive of her plagues. As a matter of fact, tomorrow, you can't miss tomorrow. Invite your friends down because we'll be doing the seven plagues of the book of Revelation tomorrow. Come on out. The book of Revelation is not to scare you because it is God's letter, love letter to us. Amen? It is God's love letter to us, but it is not to scare. Don't worry about those things. They are symbols and they are code, but the Lord uses them, have them there so that he's helped to draw us closer to him. Friends, may God continue to bless you. May God continue to keep you as we serve him in this part of the vineyard. Because things are winding up. Things are winding up. It is coming to a close. It is coming to a close. And while you and I are not doing what God wants us to do, look what's happening. We have a president who is peddling or selling Bibles. Yet at the same time, he doesn't own one, he doesn't read it. So you see how this system is joining together, church and state. It's coming, it's like they're coming, hand, coming in hand in hand. We must see what is happening these days and turn to God. Read God's word and he will show us the way. Amen? Amen. May God bless you. May God keep you as we continue to serve him. And for those who are online, we want to invite everyone down here tomorrow. We're going to be giving out your certificate. Amen? Amen? Loving God and our Father. Lord, I have done what you have sent me here to do. If by chance there's anything, Lord, according to my knowledge, I'm missing, Lord, through your inspiration, bring it to your people that they may have a clearer understanding because I'm only a piece of clay. But I'm willing to be used for you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Somebody say, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Have you really felt this evening? God is good. All the time God is good. His man servant again. Thank you, Alex for, uh, Griffin, for the study. And of course, as you heard it, you will be back here tomorrow. We're going to have a full, happy Sabbath. Amen? Amen? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Let's all stand as we depart for our theme song. With our theme song. Just keep trimming your lamps. As we can see, the signs of our times are really, really right here. Let every lamb be burning bright. Da da, it's always there in the dark. It's so awful long nights before the Lord's appearing. Then trim your lamps, my brethren dear. Then trim your lamps with godly fear. The master's coming, draw it near. Let every lamp be burned. One more time. Then trim your lamps, my brethren dear. Then trim your lamps with godly fear. The master's coming, draw it near. Let every lamp be burning. For those who are online, don't forget to tune in as well. Send a link and let's continue to praise the Lord as we have it in Jesus' name.